Good morning, everybody. Um, I am in Dongguan. Today is the 27th of March of 2020. And um, as many, many foreigners here in China, I woke up to the news about this situation with the borders in China. Um, basically, Chinese nationals are allowed in. So let's go back a little bit to understand what the progression has been, the changes have been, and uh, where we are right now. Initially, they were uh, allowing free entry to pretty much anybody who wanted to come back into the country. Then the next step was, well, if you are coming from a, a certain number of countries, then people would be um, sent to a quarantine. This was extended to all airports, all nationalities, and well, as of uh, tonight, so today's Friday, tonight at um, zero hours, there will be no entry of foreigners. So let me let me explain what that means. It means that if you are right now abroad, if you're in America, Australia, whatever, and you have a valid visa to come back to China, you will not be allowed in. Probably you won't be allowed on the plane either. Even so. Um, the visa that you've got right now abroad is worth absolutely nothing. What you've got to do is um, you need to reapply for that visa and upon application, the embassies and the consulates are going to evaluate whether it is absolutely necessary for you to, to come to China. Um, some of the exceptions are diplomatic visas or aid. Um, there are a few very, very specific cases where foreigners will be allowed to fly in. Um, so that's the situation. And this applies not only to like tourist visas or work visas, this is also for resident permits like myself. I'm a resident and if I were outside, regardless of, I would not be allowed into the country. No port of entry, no excuse, no exceptions. For example, um, there are those um, 40, uh, 48 hour visas uh, when you land in Shenzhen, for example, or a 15 day visa to, Sha to uh, Sanya, things like that. None of those are accepted. Now, how do I feel about this? And I know how a lot of anti-Chinese people are going to be uh, talking about this. They're going to be saying, oh, uh, you see, now there's no freedom of travel or whatnot. Look, I've been saying this for the longest time. The world should have done this a long time ago. If you've closed your board, sorry, I got a connection problem. What I was saying is that if the world had done this uh, from the get go, the virus would have not spread at all and it would be already self-contained. But people were sneaking out of the country, countries were not closing their borders, and now it's all over the world, 195 countries, uh, according to my um, friend, uh, Dr. Frankel. So this is where we are. Now, um, so let me get my notes over here. Um, so yeah, that's that means that the people that got in uh, got in just in time, like Velo 60 and Jayo Nation and some of those people that came back only a couple of days ago. But what does that make me feel? Do I feel um, bad about it? It does give me a feeling of being trapped. But again, I understand that this is necessary. This is what China has got to do. Um, the number of imported cases uh, has been uh, increasing. And, uh, well, it's necessary to control the foreigners that are coming in. Hey, there's a mosquito inside the car, just got it. <laughs> now, a lot of people are going to say, and a lot of people are arguing that um, a lot of these imported cases are coming from uh, Chinese people who were abroad. And that is uh, factual, but there is a difference. If you're a Chinese national, chances, and, okay, two things. If you're a Chinese national and you're traveling abroad, chances are, a, number one, you are uh, in the social security or social insurance system in China. And number two, you have enough money to look after your, your medical expenses. So this is why they are allowed in. There's not uh, like discrimination or any, anything. A lot of people are going to say, those people who hate China, 
oh, this is discrimination. And well, why do you have a lock at home? Only the people who have a key can actually go into your home. Is that discrimination? You're protecting your home. You're protecting your family. You're protect. That's why you lock your door, right? Is exactly the same reason why they're doing right now. They're protecting their home. They're not allowing people to to come in, um, so as not to um, bring the virus back. Um, as you can see, guys, I'm driving right now. Uh, wow, it's a huge accident. Let me flip the camera if I can. I don't think I can, but have a look. Traffic is back to normal. Traffic is back to being a little bit crazy. It's a car that was, there's a truck that flipped over. All right. So uh, I'm driving, so I can't really answer your questions, but I wanted to share this information with you guys. Borders are now closed. For how long, we have no idea. Um, but as I've said in other videos, the faster, the sooner other countries get this under control, the sooner we will all be going back to normal. Um, if you guys want to leave any comments or any questions, uh, I get a bit of connection problems because I'm on 4G. Um, what is your reaction to this news? I mean, I woke up this morning and uh, I started asking a lot of people because there's a lot of false information out there and there's evil people, really mean people who put out information that is that is false. But I've confirmed this with a couple of friends and this is true, it is official. Um, the closing of borders is taking effect uh, tonight at, uh, well, midnight. Also, if somebody's out there and uh, China is decreasing dramatically the cases. Yes, that this is true. Gabo Prado. <clears throat> On the other hand, the U.S. Yeah, the cases in the U.S. are spiraling. Oh, look, I was talking to my friend Victor in China. I don't know if Victor is watching. We were just chatting on WeChat. And he's really worried because his family is in New York and New Jersey. Um, and uh, he's really, really pissed off at the double standard uh, where um, they were blaming China for wanting to restart the economy we were talking about a channel called uh, china in focus where they were basically blaming china for uh, wanting to restart its economy well china is in a situation in a case where look a, a couple of things that have changed let me give you this information for example right, right now in my city we are not required to wear masks if we are not in close proximity that's a change that has happened this morning i'm having breakfast man and took 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 i hear a knock on my door i'm like holy and i'm reading this news so i'm like is that the police what happened <clears throat> i open the door there's a delivery guy so delivery people are already being allowed into into the gardens and the gated communities so things are improving very very quickly and we uh, as teachers and, and uh, training center owners we've been talking a lot about well if everything is kind of like going back to normal why why there's no news about uh, what's going to happen to us teachers and training centers and um, well the the measures have been so specific for example they sent a communication saying oh restaurants and bars can open right now and specifically it says schools and training centers will receive their own communication in time so uh, it's very specific and i understand why the reason is schools here are usually room and board and they're very very big you got schools with 2000 students 5000 students 8000 students so when these young people who perhaps are not very responsible or are not very thoughtful or mindful are going to be living in uh, close quarters. Imagine if one kid is, is asymptomatic and brings in the virus. Just one kid. It would be horrible. So I was talking to Victor, Victor in China, go visit his channel. And I feel like I'm going to lose my business. I, I feel that I am very, very close to having to close down, but I do understand. I understand the measures. I understand that money is one thing, health is a complete, health supersedes the economy. 
and this is why I don't understand what's happening in the United States. Uh, Victor and I, we were chatting and we were so upset at the fact that, yeah, we're going to reopen by Easter. How on earth are you going to just say? And they were asking him, hey, so what do you use for, for setting that deadline? No, just a feeling. Go F yourself. Um, anyway, so today um, I'm going to do something that is part of my exit strategy. Um, I'm going to the repair shop because my wife's car has a couple of scratches. So we're going to um, get a paint job and eventually maybe having to sell that car. Uh, that's how bad the situation is getting. So yeah, uh, putting um, remedial plans into action. Um, any other comments, uh, Gabo? Thanks for that comment. Anybody else has any questions or any comments that you would like to, to you like me to elaborate on? Hello. Anybody has any questions or anything that you guys would like to talk about? <sighs> so. Okay, if, if there's nothing, then I'll just wrap up this video by letting you guys know that this is kind of like a reset of, the, okay, can you go to Hong Kong? No, oh, okay, let me tell you about that. I wear contact lenses, uh, as you probably have noticed if you watch my channel, and uh, I normally change my contact lenses every year and a half or two years. Since this started, I've been meaning to change my contact lenses because they're already a little bit scratched and they get a little bit dirty. And I cannot get the, the kind of contact lenses that they wear here in China. Mine are hard contact lenses with very high permeability, so I actually get them from the United States. So I go to Hong Kong, I visit my eye doctor, she puts in the order, and seven days later I go back and get my, my contact lenses. So, no, um, I haven't been to Hong Kong. But let's talk about what the law says, uh, the, the regulations are right now. Anybody from the mainland going into Hong Kong needs to be quarantined for 14 days. So no matter which way of the border you're going in, you're going to be quarantined. So if you're going to Hong Kong, 14 day quarantine in Hong Kong. And if you're going to come from Hong Kong into China, then you're going to be quarantined as well. So and the other thing is that if you are a foreigner traveling into Hong Kong, Hong Kong is a Chinese territory. So this ban applies to Hong Kong as a port of entry. That's an important, very important difference to, well, not difference, sorry, um, clarification to make. Uh, you can't fly into Hong Kong if you are a foreigner or Macau or no port of entry, none. Foreigners are not allowed through any port of entry into China. Um, so yeah, right now for me going into Hong Kong would mean 14 day quarantine in Hong Kong and and coming back into China, another 14 day quarantine um, once I cross the border in China. But for foreigners hoping to fly into Hong Kong, you won't be allowed entry either. So there you go. Um, that was my, my answer to your question. Um, how's everybody doing? Any other questions? Any other comments? I want to leave a, a final comment, uh, just my thought about some YouTubers out there that seem to be looking for trouble in order to be able to document what they're going through. It's, it's, look, I don't appreciate what they're doing. Why? Because they are using resources that other people could have. For example, people who are quarantined right now in five-star hotels, for example. Well, they're getting tested twice a day or every day, I think, when there are places in the world where people don't have enough tests. That is wasting a very important resource that another human being somewhere in the globe could be using and is in dire need of it. You didn't need to leave. You didn't need to put yourself in this quarantine situation. You chose to, and now you're wasting resources that could be used by other people argue with me give me arguments is that not true is that not the fact people who are putting themselves in this quarantine situations or getting tested situations just for youtube clicks you are 
I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of being in the same in the same pool of uh, YouTubers. Don't do that. You're wasting resources that are useful for other people. Like when people were hoarding masks and things like things like that. Now you're what? You're wasting um, test kids that you didn't need to waste. You didn't need to use in the first place. So yeah, again, another venting. Just getting this off my chest, guys. We're getting close to the car repair shop, so um, I think I'm gonna have to be wrapping up this video. Any other comments? Any other? Any other questions? Because I got a couple of minutes, but that's about it. Anybody wants to know anything? It's what you miss, um, guys. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up this video, but let me tell you, I really, really appreciate if you guys can um, help me. In this particular situation remember to subscribe hit the notification and uh, if you want to contribute in any way if you can contribute in any way there's a link in the comment section down below in the description of this video where you can make a contribution by buying me a cup of coffee so for now that's it uh, tonight at 9 p.m. here in China and uh, probably 8 a.m. in uh, America or Canada um, I will be talking to dr. Sunny uh, sorry Sandy Sun to give you guys some tips on parenting. Um, everybody is quarantined, everybody is uh, stuck at home with their children. Um, and well, you can see a little bit how teachers <laughs> feel day in and day out dealing with uh, the craziness of children. So we're going to give you some tips and strategies on how to keep your kids uh, uh, motivated with high. We're going to talk about, about well, anything that you can do to help your kid uh, stay focused, stay motivated, stay, he stay healthy and learning. So those are parenting tips for quarantine families. That's going to be live tonight around 9 o'clock in China time. And uh, all right, guys, that's all the time for today. Um, make sure to share this video so that people know and, uh, yeah, the, the news spread around. So I'll see you again, guys. Take care. Bye for now.